What's up, guys? <laughs> Kaylee has this weird thing about how she has to have the mic on mute, even though it's not set in any of the inputs in the other screens during the stream. And she clicked the button about 12 times during that intro to make sure that it was on mute, even though we weren't making any noise. So uh, He's a prankster, so I don't ever know if I'm saying something and you all can hear. <laughs> not that I'm you... saying anything bad. I just, I don't know. You're strange. I don't know about you. Okay, so what's up, guys? Um, we have it. We have. It's been busy over here, and it's been crazy out there. So um, we're going to do a Q and A, um, and answer some more questions that you have. Maybe come up with some uh, ideas uh, for training drills that you can do. And we also have a giveaway. Um, so the. Uh, I don't want to start the giveaway yet because we'll wait for some more people to get in here. Um, but it'll be a fun little deal and we'll do some interactive stuff where we're going to be asking you guys questions and see who has the first answer that's correct. Um, so, what do you got for us, Kaylee? Well, first of all, I want to know if everyone's Monday was like my Monday was because mine was terrible. It was your typical Monday. How many times did I think I had a business call? <laughs> like every hour? I literally thought I had I have business calls scheduled throughout the week and none of them were on Monday. And literally I spent probably three hours of the day preparing for calls that weren't on that day. And the time came and then like 15 minutes passed. I was like, man, everybody's running so late today. And then I got to looking back at my stuff and it's not even, wasn't even on the same day. So anybody else have any? A week like that so far. I know it's only Tuesday, but nice. that's how my week's going. <laughs> Very nice. Yep. So what did you do this morning? This morning, Channel 4 was here. And actually, I don't know if I'm supposed to say that yet because they're doing like a whole segment on a bunch of apps. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, I forget you heard that. Yeah, but a news channel is here. And uh, did, they did a story on me and my dad and um, making the Olympic team and the facility out here, so pretty cool. Yeah, very Probably nice. Be online. Yeah. I don't imagine. Cool. Yeah. What did you do this morning? <laughs> I kept pressing reset when you kept missing the targets while they were trying to get B-roll. Yeah, I shot really bad today. <laughs> <laughs> we have an Olympic athlete here who chokes under the pressure of news cameras. No, that's not true. <laughs> you just shook your head yes. No, I was swallowing. <laughs> That's not true. I wasn't choking under pressure. What uh, was happening? I was just missing. Oh. That Those days happen. I see. We also have a special guest with us today. I was going to say, we have a little guest. Lily is here. She's normally here. It's her first time on camera. Yeah, she normally sits over there, but she's made an appearance today. She's the official uh, podcast mascot, I guess you could say. <laughs> so we have a question. Jack from New York wants to know if the rug is dry yet. The rug is dry. The rug is dry. However, I do not recommend the approach I took to cleaning the rug. It was uh, a mess. And I had to have a cleaning company come and clean it. And then it still was a mess. So then I had to drag it outside to let it dry again. And then drag it back inside and it still wasn't all the way dry. So yeah, I would just suggest but at this point, I could have bought a whole new rug. <laughs> but I tried. I was trying to stay, you know, quarantined and do my own thing and clean my own rug. I'm not a rug cleaner. No? Nope. Don't let me clean your rug. <laughs> <laughs> I 
flood oh your house. Oh my gosh. Man. Yeah, but no, it is clean. I would say it's as clean as it's ever been. It looks nice. It's clean. Except when cannoli came and then peed all over it. He didn't pee all over it. Huh? That was Bella. Do you want to get it into that? <laughs> okay. Um, he wants to know, Kevin wants to know where Bella is. Bella and Cannoli both are sitting over here. They're just not on camera. Yeah, they're just hanging out. Yeah. So Cannoli is uh, our other English cocker, and he's like a blonde English cocker. I guess he's red. I don't know what he is. But here's a cool story. So if you guys had watched our... Was Joel our last episode? Mm-hmm. So, yeah, so Joel Don, this is the guy who we interviewed uh, on the previous episode, um, actually has Cannoli's sister as a dog. Her name is Coco, and they're both crazy. And, <laughs> but they, so it was, it was kind of cool because Coco was here before we got Cannoli back from summer school, I guess. Mm -hmm. He went to summer camp. Yeah, it would have been nice. Camp. It would have been nice to have them both here at the same time. But, uh, Cannoli, uh, qu quick story about Cannoli. So he, as a puppy, was like the sweetest little dog. I mean, he liked to cuddle and play, and he was so sweet. But he never took a nap. I've never had a puppy that didn't take a nap, like ever. You know, normally how you can like run puppies, and then they're so cute to play with, and then they come inside, and then they take a nap. Cannoli has never taken a nap. He's like the most energetic dog I've ever had. Oh, honest to God, never. He has never. Never taken. Not once. Has this he ever is not taken an exaggeration. And I sent him away to get trained, and he's back now. And he is now a grown up version of his puppy self, full mm -hmm. of energy, will not take a nap, but he's trained now. Like, you can manage him now. Like, he's actually he's a cool dog. <laughs> He's a pretty cool dog. He's so crazy. He's crazy, but he's a cool dog. All of the guys at the uh, where he got trained at were like, where'd you get him? We got to have one. <laughs> uh, so Rice wants to know, what are we able to hunt at the moment? Hmm. I don't know. Maybe just squirrels? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. We've been so busy. I haven't been able to shoot a gun I, in forever. I don't th I'm not sure if squirrel season is open or not, but... Not too much is open right now here in Arkansas. I mean, yeah. it's probably like your varmint type stuff. Squirrel, possum, coon, armadillo. Armadillers. Those type of things. No bird hunting, which is what's my favorite. Yeah. Yeah. What about y'all? What's up, what's up there? Y'all hunting? Anybody hunting? Or y'all staying at home? Turkey season just closed. It's been closed for a while. Not everywhere. Well, here. Yeah. I don't hunt everywhere. Right. But up up north, it just closed maybe two or three days ago. Oh, yeah. Did yeah. anybody get a good turkey? I got a turkey this year. It's pretty good. Um, okay, so I said we do, we're 20 minutes in, 17. Although eight of that was the countdown. I was going to say. <laughs> so now that more people are here, we're going to, let's do one giveaway. Okay. Okay, so the giveaway is, the story behind this is, oh, Revived just subscribed. Thank you very much. We appreciate that. If you guys are watching right now and you're not subscribed to us on YouTube and you have a YouTube account, please do so because uh, there's some really cool stuff that we want to do with our live feeds and with the other videos uh, that we post um, that, that YouTube doesn't allow us to do until we have at least a thousand subscribers. So um, we have some cool stuff planned. We just can't really do it yet. Uh, so We're not cool enough yet yeah. <laughs> under YouTube standards. Yeah, it's kind of frustrating that, that that's the case, but you know, we, um, we're getting there. And uh, so the, the, the more that, uh, help we can get in, that, in respect to that, the better. And the faster we can start to do some of the really awesome stuff that we want to do. Like, I mean, one of the things we want to do is ho host a, a live, you know, like live seminars where we can teach you guys uh, live and incorporate um, yeah, like actually uh, teaching. Like not, actual Not te like a video analysis, like an actual, like if you were here with us, coaching experience. But we can't do that yet because we don't have enough subscribers and view times yet. Yeah. Or view We're hours. very close to view hours. We are view, yeah. view hours are very close, but uh, subscribers, I think we have to hit a 1,000. 1,000, yeah. Yeah, right. we have to hit 1,000. So 
We're about 600 right now. So come on, guys. Everybody make another account and subscribe to <laughs> us. <laughs> then we'll have 1,200. Uh, no, but anyways. Um, okay, so before I get into the, what the giveaway is, uh, Kevin Peden wants to know, with all the craziness going on, when do y'all plan to get back to regularly coaching again? We're so, back. Yeah, we're back. I mean, we have people showing up uh, here at the lodge um, for some lessons. And within two or three weeks, I'm hitting the road again. Uh, I'll be sending out an email to my students very shortly. Uh, I'm waiting on one thing to be finalized to send that email out. Uh, so I'm going to start hitting my regular place of Rochester, New York. Uh, well, Rochester, New York is one, one place. <laughs> uh, Chicago, South Florida, and Houston. Um, but other than that, you know, we're, we're back on the road doing it again. Yeah, we're, everything's open here at our facility, um, Cypress Creek Lodge, Worcester National Shooting, whatever you want to call it. Down in Arkansas, we're open. So, yes. um, yeah, as far as traveling goes, like David said, it's about another two weeks or so, and then we'll be back on the road, mm -hmm. I would say. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so, funny story about the giveaway. Uh, my sponsors all of them uh always give me crap because i never wear their hats and the reason for this is because nobody that i'm sponsored by makes a hat big enough to fit my head he has an ungodly big head <laughs> yes so i got these really cool special game board hats uh that i really wish i could wear uh this is them you can see their uh, game board, Dark Storm. They're all black, just murdered out black hats, which is cool because um, so the uh, Dark Storm is the shell that I shoot that I, I actually shot at the World Championship in Budapest that I won with, and it is a really cool branded shell. Uh, every, the box is all black. It's it's awesome. My my business is all black and orange. So. Just branding-wise, it goes really well, and these hats are really cool. And like I said, I wish I could wear them, but I can't. So we're gonna uh, we're gonna give some away today. And th also, I just you know, out of fairness to Kaylee, um, ha you know, she shoots federal. This is this is not her thing. This is these are my it's hats that I'm giving. It's not a sponsored away. giveaway. Let yeah. Me say that. This is right. The, I don't want to get her in trouble, but uh, next I, week we'll give away something federal. Yeah. <laughs> If they're as cool as Game Boy. They were cool. <laughs> they made, Anyways. They partnered with Black Rifle Coffee, which I don't know if y'all saw, but I have now partnered with. And Federal makes, well, Black Rifle Coffee makes Federal coffee now. K-Cup coffee. Yeah. Does Game Boy have coffee? Uh, coffee and guns go together. Okay. It's America. Let me ask you something. Does, does can you use coffee to break clay targets? 100%. How? Do you drink coffee every morning when you wake up to go shoot? Yeah. There you go. Wake no, you not up. when I shoot. There, you already said yes. I, when I'm not shooting. <laughs> okay. Um, Ken, Ken, I don't know how to pronounce your last name. I'm sorry. C C Cups? He says, David, can I take you back to the animony topic? I am lost on how you can change 2% of the shot but lose 20-ish percent efficiency at the target. Great show, by the way. Uh, let me get back to that. Um, uh, okay, so anyways, this here is the hat, one of the hats that we're giving away, so we can see it again. Dark Storm hat, Game Boy on the back. And we're going to ask a question, and the first person to give us the correct answer is going to win the hat, or we'll send it out to you if you want us to sign it, or if you want, we'll figure out what we're going to do, but we'll ship it out to you. Um, and I would say, let's, how about this question? Okay. Um, you mean you don't have a question? No, I'm going to think of one right now. What is the, do you got a question? <laughs> I'm doing the second one. <laughs> you don't have a question now? No, you, you said this wasn't my giveaway, so. Okay, so um, which number was on the tail fin of Lieutenant Brandon uh, Hempler's U.S. Navy Blue Angels airplane? Yes. 
He was our guest like a couple episodes ago. Jack says number it says four, Is I that... think, or four X, but that's not correct. <laughs> Nick from Craig Off wants to know how he sends questions on YouTube. Nick, you have to be subscribed, and you just go on to the little sidebar where it says say something, and you just. Say something. You have to be lo- if you're logged, logged in, in. Yeah. Have an account. Log in. Subscribe to us, and then you can uh, send in questions. Uh, okay, so we have a couple people that have answered the correct question, but in terms of YouTube's commenting, one person, the first person, oh, Jack's. J- Jack said four, four X is my hat size. Oh. So Ron Schwartz from uh, New York is the first person to answer the question correctly. And he says number five. Oh, I see what you mean. You're asking what position he was in. Number five. What's on I the tail? I thought you were asking what, because you know planes have Telfin numbers as like license plates kind of. Mm-hmm. I, that's what I thought you were asking. I was like, how do you know that? <laughs> I know everything. Yes, he w- he's the number five uh, Blue Angel pilot. So, Ron, this one's your hat. It'll go well with all the Game Boy that you shoot. That's cool because Ron has bought, purchased a lot of Game Boy over the years. Thank you, Ron. Ron's the first winner. All right. Sometime maybe in 15 minutes or so, we'll, we'll do another one. Yeah. Sound good? Okay. Cool. I wonder if I can... Is there a way for me to highlight... I'll just write it down. No, no. I want to oh. see if I can like have his name pop up on here. Hold on. No. Well, that's a failure. <laughs> Anyways, Ron's hat's going to be sitting over there waiting for him. Um, Get back to your question. What was my question? The, in, the interview question. Oh, yeah, Ken, can you explain to me? Oh, I think I understand what you mean. So uh, how, how your question was, how can you change 2% of the shot but lose 20-ish percent efficiency at the target? Great shot, by the way. Um, so the you're ch- we're changing 2%. Uh, we're, we're basically, it's not 2%, it's 3%. Adding th- 3% anemone, but it's it's the difference in density of the anemone versus the um uh versus the the lead um and i don't know if it was 20 percent um efficiency it's just a difference of foot pounds at the um uh at, at of basically how much foot pounds are translating into hitting the target um and uh but that's basically I have something I want to talk about with them. Yeah, sure. So, what do y'all think is the most important factor um, go that plays into shooting well? And I mean that as in like physical fitness. Would you like to know more about shooting specific workouts? Do you think it's nutrition? Do you think it's a coach? What do y'all think plays the biggest role into being successful in shooting? Or is there multiple? What do you think it is? Well, I'm not going to answer now. Why? Because they're going to type their answers in 30 seconds. Well, I know that, but, like, just part of the conversation. Can I wait for them to have their answers first? I guess. I don't want people cheating. Is this for a giveaway? No. Oh. Okay. No, my questions are going to be good for the giveaway. Nick says, when will David shoot a Krieg off? My answer to that question is... Uh, let's see how much it will cost Kriegoff for me to shoot one. <laughs> uh, what is... How, how long will it take me to master lead reduction? Um, come take a lesson. Yeah, come take a lesson. <laughs> I'll give you a lesson in lead reduction. Or maybe I'll make a video and we'll sell it for like $1,000. And it'll be the, the basics and introduction of lead reduction. <laughs> okay, what are they saying? Okay, so um, uh, Rice says, nutrition and gun mount are massively underplayed, in my opinion. Um, 
Kevin says mechanics and hydration. Uh, Jack says coach. Nate says putting the pattern on the target. That is, <laughs> that's yep, a, that will help. That's a cheating if answer. You, if you can do that every time, you will never lose. <laughs> um, I don't know your first name, but it just says Pete Higginson. Uh, it says self-confidence. That's a good one. Yep. Uh, Caden Fitch says mechanics and nutrition. Did I already say that? I feel like. Well, nutrition and gun mount was from Rice. Oh. Um, Nick says, uh, a solid person in life have to have everything sound at home to perform well on the field. True. I'd 100% agree with that. Uh, Phil says hydration, especially in hot weather states like Texas. Mm -hmm. um, and <laughs> Nick's funny. I think, so we're getting mostly, you know, mechanics and nutrition. Mm -hmm. What do you think, like having the success that you've had, what do you think has played the biggest role in, that you can find like a common denominator that's played like the biggest role in you being a successful shooter? Like you know how you try things like here and there and you yeah. kind of go through phases, but like what's been a main common denominator that's been? Um, I think that without a doubt, uh, it's self-awareness. And because so mechanics are important, your eyes are important, your emotions are important, your hydration is important, all of those things are important, but if you don't understand how to basically self-check that in real time, all of those things, um, it's really hard to play the game. So let's, let's look at the mechanics through the filter of self-awareness. Um, if I'm very self-aware physically as I'm learning mechanics, my learning curve is shortened. I'm also able to control my movements better because I'm self-aware of how much anxiety or tension I have while I'm trying to make them. Let's talk about eyes, how important the eyes are. I can tell you, I, I can guarantee that if I were to, if you were to give me a week to say, all right, in one week you're going to have an eye test. You got, they're going to test how efficient your eyes are. And I purposefully did the wrong things in terms of my hydration and my tr nutrition and my sleep. Um, I bet you I would test twice as bad as if I had that same amount of time to prepare to do well. Um, and so most people don't even realize how when they're eating, how their eyes are changing and how, how hydrated they are based off of how their eyes are working. And so a high level of self-awareness allows you to understand those things right now and make judgment calls on how to make them better when you need them. And so... Um, for me, self-awareness is huge in, in every respect because I think it's kind of all-encompassing. Yeah, I would agree with that. And I don't think that that's something that that many coaches are teaching, you know? Yeah. That's like, you know, when I coach, I always try to ask the student, you know, okay, if you missed that target, what happened? Or if you hit that target, what happened? Like, did you do good? Did you do what you were supposed to do? Uh, did you have a plan and did you execute that plan? Like I try to make them self-aware of what they're doing yeah. so that I don't have to be on the field with them and tell them what they're doing. Like they can kind of like self-diagnose it. Yeah. So uh, the biggest thing that where people lose self-awareness is right in the shot because most people just go straight into autopilot. Like let's say that I'm coaching somebody. And I say, okay, nice shot. They turn around. We're talking about some things. And I'm trying to explain to them what I want them to do next. Okay, I want you to set your eyes here. And I want you to titrate them in a certain way. Catch the bird visually. I want your mechanics to be, you know, X, Y, Z. Have your hands work in time. Don't change the plane of your gun. Rotate with your body. Don't lean. Uh, and say we, we discuss those things. And then you call pull. You, say, you look at me and say, all right, got it. You turn back around. You set up. You call pull. And none of those things happen because as soon as you call pull, you just went into chase yeah. mode of trying to shoot the bird. It's like that, you had a plan, but you didn't execute it. Yeah, and so like having the self-awareness to understand your value system and say, okay, well, right now I'm in a lesson, I'm learning, I'm practicing by myself, and what's important to me right now is not hitting the bird. So I'm not going to allow myself to go into autopilot, but instead I'm going to focus on I don't care about the target. I don't care about the result. Let's focus on how my hands feel. Let's focus on how my balance feels. Let's focus on how my eyes are working. 
Um, that's huge, and a lot of people don't know how to do that. Um, and the uh, and so as a coach, to try to teach somebody how is you have to change. Um, you have to change their value system. You have to change what their their filter is for learning. Also, Dennis Horton just subscribed. So Thanks, Dennis. thank you, Dennis. Appreciate that. Helping us get to that one thousand. Yes, we are too <laughs> closer as of right as of uh, as of today. Today, <laughs> yes. Um, <laughs> Brian Label says uh, money to shoot a lot. <laughs> that's <laughs> Valid that's no point. joke. That's for sure. This did you know? Uh, the stats may have changed, but the last time I checked, shooting was the second most expensive sport in the Olympics, behind equestrian. Yeah. Yeah, I definitely would. I mean, yeah. If you if you ain't got a. It's extremely expensive. It's hard. It is hard. Um. Okay. So, Art Miller says it is so hard for me not to check the bead uh, for the correct lead and to trust my peripheral vision. Best tip to keep your eyes on the leading edge. Um, let me read to see if there's any addendums to that. Okay, so do you have any uh, tips for that? Do you want read me to read it again? Uh, it says, it's so hard for me not to check the bead for correct lead and to trust my peripheral vision. Best, te- best tip to keep your eyes on the leading edge. In my experience, like in my game, that comes more out of habit. Um, would you agree with that? It, to an extent. <coughs> and the best, the best way that I've found, and I coach a lot younger kids than David coaches, but the best tip that I've found to kind of work out of that is I will take the kids and move them closer to the bunker because it's a fast game. And then I make them shoot the target in a controlled but very aggressive way. Um, So it literally eliminates the time that they have to uh, check the barrel. There's also another couple drills that I do for them. So I'll make them close their eyes. And then when I say now, they can open it and go find it and shoot it. Um, Or they can call pull. And when I say now, they can't leave with their gun until I tell them now. And then they can go shoot it. Um, But... From what I've coached, it's more of a habit and a bad habit at that. And, I mean, it just takes some working out from what I've experienced, but you probably have a different answer. No, not really. I would say that is um, that is a practical approach for how to do that. Yeah. Well, my, it works with kids. Well, it works going to work for everyone. Yeah. Um, my, my approach... I would I would take more of a philosophical approach and a psychological approach to it. Um, take more simple approaches. <laughs> yeah, let me let me explain. So right now I'm looking at the camera. I'm gonna look at your top right corner of the screen. Everybody watching. All right, now I'm gonna look at the top left. Now the bottom right. Now the bottom left. Okay, so I don't know if you could see my eyes moving. Okay, but they're basically moving. I'm looking at the camera at the at the lens. And I'm moving them basically a square inch at about, how far away would you say that is? Five feet away? Okay, so five feet away, that's a square inch. I don't know what it is in relation to how much my eyes are moving, but I'm, it's a very small amount. It's about the amount that if you're shooting a 30-yard crossing target that the lead would be, okay, um, in, terms of, in terms of two-dimensional space. Um, my question is, if I were to ask you, Kaylee, Look at the top left corner of the lens. Can you do it? Mm-hmm. Now look at the bottom right corner. Can you do it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, so let's pretend that instead the left edge is the target and the right edge is the gun. I want you to look at the gun now. Okay, okay now I want you to look at the target. Okay, so could you do that? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So the question is not that I can't physically do this, meaning that you you don't have a problem or of not being able to see the tar- not being able to look at the target you have a problem of caring too much about where the gun is so the question is not how do i teach my eyes to look in the right spot and use my peripheral vision to have the placement of the gun the the, the question is how do i overcome consciously the desire to care about where my gun is and so the answer to that is going to be different for every person that's listening. But 
I'll give you my answer because I'm a very logical person. I deduce it down into this. This is my explanation to myself. What do I have a problem doing? Looking at the gun or checking the lead. Why do I have a problem doing that? Because I want to hit the target or I don't want to miss the target. Okay. So what is going to give me the best chance of hitting the target or not missing the target? Looking at the target is the answer to that question, right? So if I'm looking at the gun or the space because I don't want to miss, yet I don't want to miss and the best thing for me to do not to miss is to look at the bird, then I can put together the two parts of saying that, well, if I really want to do the best thing for myself that's going to avoid what I'm afraid of happening, which is missing, then I need to do what's kind of a little bit scary, which is not see the gun. So is it is it more, I guess, fear-based to look at the target for some people? Yes, it's harder to do that because they want to see the gun because they want to hit the target. But if you can overcome the fact and understand the fact that if you really want to hit the target, the best thing to do is look at it, then you can make that conscious that conscious connection to it. So it's basically a repositioning a, a re, uh, of value. Um, and so, you know, that's something that you have to overcome psychologically. And, uh, but the first two steps to understanding how to do that is to one, understand that it's not a mechanical or biological issue. I mean, you can look at anywhere you want. That's in your conscious decision to do that. Uh, and then two, understand why you can't do it. It goes back to that self-awareness we were talking about earlier. Mm -hmm. Like you have to be self-aware that that is your problem and then figure out the best way to go about it to change it for you. Yeah. Yeah, like the, yeah, I, mean, I could go in forever about, about explaining that. Let's see. Uh, gun in the line and unbroken visual focus on the target. I think he's answering your question. Which one? Uh, John Garza says, gun in the line and unbroken visual focus on the target. Yeah. Yeah. Being successful in shooting. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I would definitely say, obviously mechanics play a huge role in that, and nutrition and hydration, but I think the core value of it is self-awareness. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no problem, Art. I just read your comment. Okay. Um, giveaway time. Sure. Okay. Okay. Amazingly. We have another hat. <laughs> this is another Dark Storm hat. I'm telling you guys, these are cool hats. I'm going to miss having these. I wish they would fit me, but they don't. So, uh, Kaylee, do you have a question now? Yes. Is it a good one? Well, it's to see how, how they are paying attention. How attentive you are. Not on this episode, but just to us. Mm. So... How, I would definitely fail this question. No, you won't. <laughs> How long have David and I known each other? Ooh. We've said it multiple times on here, a couple times on the podcast. How long have David and I known each other? You can give years or you can give an age that we met. Let me tell you, it's too long. Brian says hat and a flat. Um, we got one. Forever. <laughs> 24 years. <laughs> About since you were... Okay, so Rice says since we were eight, but that's when we started shooting. Mm-hmm. Uh, Nick says 11 years. We would have been 16. Nope. Mm -mm. Brian says forever. Nope. <laughs> but it feels like it. <laughs> Jack says 24 years. Nope. Rai says about 20. I don't know if he means 21 years. He probably meant 21 years. No. Nate says since you were 12. Yep. Yeah. Wait. Man, my Rochester's students are not going <laughs> to they really are <laughs> I'm just going to bring all the fancy things to Rochester so we got a winner 
Nate, this one's your hat. Nick, it was since I was 12, not 12 years. This and the same thing in the back, game board. Very I'm going to have cool. to say, Nick, send us some uh, Kriegoff hats to give away for the next episode. I don't know if they can get here by then. Well, we'll win over. Yeah. Our, for our next giveaway. Yeah. That'd be cool. Okay. This is good, guys. Um, I'm, I'm surprised that, that, I mean, that's like, those are close guesses, y'all. Yeah. Who um, thinks, who thinks, uh, well, no, I'll save that one. What? No, I'll save it. What? I'll save it. Why? I'll save it. Let me mute it and then say, it. <laughs> tell me. Save it. I need to know. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, Okay, so I'm going to step it up for the next giveaway. Okay. Like a, a hard one? You're really going to have to think? No, for what we're going to give away. We'll do the grand oh. finale giveaway. Okay. It's going to be at the end of the episode. The very last thing we do. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, hmm. <laughs> Nick. What do you say? Dairy Queen gift cards would be a better giveaway. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. Who doesn't love a Dairy Queen blizzard? I'm not joking. I was on um, a video call with a student last night until like one o'clock, and uh, and Kaylee brought me dinner. I mean, I was like on the phone since like five, from like five p.m. to the like middle of the 1 night. One a.m. Yeah, and um, not with one person, with multiple people. And so she, she, I didn't have time to eat, so she brought me dinner, and it was just a Dairy Queen. Chicken, like sandwich? chicken sandwich yeah. i didn't eat it and i shouldn't say this but i i didn't have time to eat and i didn't want to eat while i was on a video call so i ate it at like one in the morning and uh so it was cold and nasty but it was really good <laughs> it was cold and nasty but it was really good. yeah like even as a cold sandwich it was a good sandwich well i don't know about that but their blizzards are it amazing. was good <laughs> um Joel says I shoot his Krieg off all the time. I do. I mean, I yeah, David does shoot my Krieg off all the time. Shoots Joel's, Donis Krieg off all the time. I shoot any of my students' guns. If I'm in a, in a lesson with a student, I'm not gonna bring my own gun gun to, uh, you know, to say, here. Let me show you something. I'm gonna go get my gun. But so I'll pick up a student's gun, um, and use it. But I do have a lot of students with Krieg offs. <laughs> Might say something. That either that. says something about Krieg offs or it says something about me. I think it says something about both. Yeah. That you're a little lost and your students are trying to help you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, $1,000 prize money giveaway. <laughs> no. That would be nice. I'm a shooter. I can't if afford you, that. If you uh, want to donate that, we're all about it. Yeah. We'll give it away. <laughs> um, Nate says I shot his old club of an SKB. I like that gun. That that was a good gun. Um, Brian says, "How do I do that with left-handed shooters?" I just shoot. Honestly, I'm not joking. I shoot left-handed. Um, uh, it's kind of fun. I'm actually really good. I'm I'm uh, in in demonstrating a move. It's pretty equivalent left to right-handed for me. Y'all didn't see that on his ESPN coverage. <laughs> I have a video of me shooting left-handed. It looks pretty good. Um, okay. Let's do uh, some... Oh, question. Yeah. So, I Are you asking did... me or them? No, them. I did a series of Trick Shot Tuesday, and I did it for about, I don't know, six weeks, I think, was the series. So, my question is, I am struggling coming up with, like, some legit but doable not like the bird box challenge or anything like that where it's pure luck what is that the bird box the movie i have no idea where what it that like is. blindfold you and you have to shoot oh it's never pure, heard of that pure luck anyway so what are I could do that. some good trick shots because i've done pretty much just about your typical classic trick shots but i want to mix it up a little bit because well, I'm bored. <laughs> so, 
I want to start doing the trick shot Tuesdays again and bring back my little series and do some trick shots. So, what is a good trick shot? Yeah, I'd say the coolest trick shot ever. Throw a true pair of teal and get two guns and hold them on each hand and go pull, bang, and shoot them both at the same time. Why is that a trick? How is it not a trick? You're just shooting a normal target. Two guns at the same time, two targets at the same time, one-handed shotgun pulling at the same time. Yeah. That's hard. Yeah, but it's not like a... That's definitely a trick. But it's just a normal, like, I can aim at it or whatever. Like, make who, sure think it. That's, who thinks that's a cool trick? I mean, that's like, if I saw somebody do that, I'd be seriously impressed. Um, <laughs> this is a hilarious question. Rice says, David, if you get if this channel gets to 2,000 subscribers, will you get a task line tattooed? <laughs> <laughs> Who thinks David should get a task line tattooed? That's hilarious. How about we set a challenge? Okay, what's today? Tuesday. If by this time next week... We have 2,000 subscribers. David has to get a tattoo. What is the tattoo? I'm going to let them pick. Majority wins. That's a t This is a terrible I idea. think it's a fantastic idea. Who's on board for this? <laughs> Why are you signing me <laughs> up for tattoos? Who's on board for this? Hold on. Lily, are you on board? Lily's on board. <laughs> if we can get 2,000 subscribers by this time next week, David gets a tattoo. Are you in? Maybe. Let's, let's hear from the people. Raise hand. Yes. Yes. Yep. Nick. We're getting a lot of support from Nick. Nick wants, to, wants you to ride a unicycle and shoot skeet from the hip. That's, that's like... Um, ride a unicycle? Yeah, you, you know Matt Drake? Are you saying that or do you know who that is? Mm -hmm. Okay, so if you guys don't know who Matt Drake is, um, he's an Olympic... I think he's an Olympic gold medalist. But uh, for international skeet, he could shoot. I might get this wrong. Nick might know, uh, but he could shoot uh, a round of international skeet from the hip on a unicycle in under one minute and shoot a perfect twenty-five. Wow. Yeah. That's impressive. That's a good, good trick shot. I'm gonna fall over uh, on the gravel we have here. <laughs> High low double four from the hip but with lead reduction. <laughs> I'm telling you guys. This lead reduction thing is about to take off. You don't. You should write a book. Everyone thinks it's a joke. It's, I, I just saw your dad comment in here. Tommy, can you tell people that I can actually hit targets lead reduction? It's the real it's deal. It's because you know how to shoot. Can, you can look at a target. If you can shoot a target from the hip or over the head or whatever, you doing this, you can hit a target. It hits it's not because, hard. It's not because it works. It hits them hard. Um, let's see. What else we got? Joel says, example, your ability to process near far quickness, which translates to target <coughs> capture, and especially on true pairs with different distances out on the field. Wait, what? Is what? that a second part of a question? <laughs> Is that a trick shot? I don't know. Oh, he's, there's another thing that he said earlier. Definitely get a synaptic eye evaluation. Then you'll know how your eyes are processing. Example, your ability to process near-far quickness, which translates to target capture, and especially on true pairs with different distances out in the field. Yeah, I, I've done that before, and it's pretty quick. Um, <laughs> thank you, Tommy. What did he say? He said he hits them very consistently with lead reduction. You'll see him at the Sporting Clays Nationals this year shooting lead reduction. <laughs> <laughs> um Okay, so I, I'm reading something in the comments. It's uh, this guy, uh, Kevin Peden and Matthew Coots. I think, tell me what's going on. I, I'm confused, and it sounds like something cool happened. Um, Back to the tattoo. I think everybody's on board for you getting a tattoo. Actually, it's about split 50-50. Really? Yeah. Man. We need that one person to push it over. <laughs> Majority. Uh. <laughs> Last giveaway? Hmm? Giveaway? Please. <laughs> 
He said his last name right. <laughs> I'm not. Listen, when you have a last name like Radulovich, you try, try to get a little bit semi uh, good at pronouncing other people's last name. Um. I want to do two more give, giveaways. Okay. Okay, but can I get up and get something real quick? Sure. All right. You're not giving away like my gun or something. Huh? <laughs> you don't need that. Check out our shirts, guys. All right, guys. While he's gone, let's plot out this, what David has to do. It doesn't have to be a tattoo. But I definitely think he should have to do something if we reach 2,000 uh, subscribers by next Tuesday. So, what are your ideas? Let's think. Make them good. Because he thinks he's like the king of all pranks. But, you know, let's kind of get in here and I think we can make it. I think we can make it good. What? Nothing. Let's see. Okay, so Matthew says that they were him and who was the other guy? Then Kevin are just friends and didn't expect them to see each other there. Oh. Uh, okay, so. Well, thanks for both joining. Glad we could have the reunion yeah, for y'all. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> you see how beyond the podium brings shooters together. Okay, so Jim says, David, you appear to mount the gun to your jaw rather than the notch below the cheekbone. Does your heads up style of shooting mitigate? To any degree, eye dominance issues. Uh, that's a very good question and a very observant one. Um, He's self-aware of you. Yeah. <laughs> so, what do you keep doing? You're like pushing me out of here. Well, that be the goal. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, um, the the way that I shoot, yeah. I mean. If you were to look at my gun, my the um, the if you look down my barrel when I have it mounted, it comes to about here on my face, um, which obviously is not very common. But the the answer to your question for me personally, no, I don't really have any eye dominance issues. Uh, it was thought that for a long time. Um, in fact, when I interviewed Dr. Colo, we talked about it a little bit because. Prior to him ever meeting me and us discussing, um, we thought that for a while I was somewhat misdiagnosed with eye dominance um, and, and wasn't. So we did the, the eye dominance test, and I'm not, I'm, I'm very strongly, as, as strong as you possibly can be, uh, right eye dominant. Um, but really, that style of shooting kind of came about for me just to be able to see the bird. Like the visibility of shooting that way is so much higher. There are definitely some downfalls to doing it that way um, in that on birds where barrel awareness is kind of more preferred, so something like a bird that's not moving at all, totally stalled out teal coming in at you or an incoming bird that's just kind of flat and, and then about to fall, um, where you would tend to maybe on accident use barrel awareness and placement of the gun to, to pull the trigger. I tend to shoot over birds a lot, so I have to modify some things, but that's basically what it is. But to answer your question generally, long story short, yes, you can modify and separate the connection between the, uh, the handedness of the eye. So like if it's a right-handed shooter, but left eye dominant or centrally dominant or some other location there, um, I can separate vertically the position between the eye and the gun to kind of negate in some way the visual information being fed to the non-dominant eye and it decreases confusion. Um, okay, there was a lot of questions that went by while I was talking. Well, you talk a lot. <laughs> um, <clears throat> this is from Matthew. He says, Kaylee, how do you feel with, the, with USA shooting statements about nationals and junior Olympics? Everyone thinks it's going to be a record low for shootouts. 
or for show out. What is what is their statement? I didn't see it yet. I'm stuck. Uh, <laughs> Go ahead. They have sent out saying uh, that they are planning to do. A sh I think this is what you're talking about. Planning to have the JOs and Nationals in sometime of September, but they still haven't said a date. Um, <clears throat> I don't know. I don't know how it's going to turn out. I don't know. There's so many questions up in the air right now. I don't. I honestly don't know. I'm kind of like in the middle of any on everything. I'm just waiting to see uh, what they like more information that they put out. I'm I'm kind of in the same boat you are. Hmm. <laughs> Kevin wants me to swap out my prod with the yield D's. I honestly can't believe that yield D's did that with that gun. Um, Rice says, can we get David's parents on here at some point to talk about his training as a junior? Um, it might be a good idea, maybe, you know, on another live. I mean, we could FaceTime my parents or anybody we want to. Think about this. We could FaceTime them on the iPad and on that coach's scene, have them, the person that we want as a guest on there. We could even have these people FaceTime. That's cool. Yeah. But we have to have a thousand subscribers. Yeah. 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 No. David, David's parents can't come on until we have a thousand subscribers. <laughs> um, were you saying something? Somebody was saying something important. Well, I was just talking. <laughs> well, then, then that wasn't important. <laughs> uh, cool. All right, new, new uh, giveaway? Okay. Okay. So this is just an example of what you're going to get. It's not the actual one because... Why don't you say that one to the very last? Huh? Did oh, this is not the one? best one. Oh. Yeah. Okay. So I don't know if you guys know, but I'm a... I love Game Boy Ammo, and I have since I was a little kid. And um, so I like to collect old ones. And this is a terribly demonstrated box it, it got wet and flooded and it's bad looking but i have some untouched ones in uh the garage that i can't can't get to very quickly but um the winner of this giveaway is going to get a, a perfect condition box of um 20 year old game boards if you guys remember these they're really cool the white golds uh and really cool they're fun you can shoot them you can not shoot them but it's a fun load to shoot because uh, if you shot sporting class 20 years ago you'll remember that box um let's see what is <laughs> i got one okay this is gonna be a good one okay what does a can of WD-40, a, um, a light bulb, and a, we'll just use those two, can of WD-40 and a light bulb have in common? Do you know this one? No. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I could ask the yes question. The yes question? Remember the question I asked everybody, like your family, my mom? <laughs> yeah. Can a WD-40 and a light bulb, what do they have in common? I'm interested to know. Can you mute it and tell me? No. Why? Huh? Mute it and tell me. No. Yeah. I need you to try and think. You're terrible. <laughs> Um, what do you think it is? <laughs> think about it. Think about it. Did they both come in a box? <laughs> okay, here's the hint. It's relevant to shooting. Did somebody... Are they own... I don't know. <laughs> think. Oh, sorry, Rose. Can you use a can of WD-40 to untie Doug the Doug is bulb? really close. Is it 40? Huh? Is it 40? 
No. 38. <laughs> Doug is... I'm very impressed. I don't know. I'm, I'm impressed that he got that. <clears throat> Keep guessing, Doug. I guess you're close. He's very close. Now everybody's going to be like scrolling up to see what Doug said. Yeah. <laughs> like trying to get the number. This is cool. We should do little giveaways like this every mm -hmm. episode. Let's clear out some of the junk we have in the house. <laughs> Just kidding. Try to give away all your crap. <laughs> <laughs> Who wants a Parazzi? <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. What's Lily doing? She's waiting to see who guesses. Nick, how does a light bulb clean a gun? What you have are to you have doing? a light to see <laughs> to clean the gun. I'm with you, Nick. I'm with you. Doing some weird stuff over at the... Okay, so everybody is really close on the the WD-40. Um, But we got to bring in the light bulb somehow. And tie it into... The theme of Beyond the Podium podcast. Matt said, how do we enter the giveaway? You just have to guess the correct answer. Yeah. Or it, get the correct answer. And the question was, what does WD-40 and a light bulb have in common? So if you know that, you're the giveaway winner. Nick is super close. Nick, expound on that. You've never heard of that word? Yeah, I've heard of that word. It's just an odd one to use. Odd choice of wording, vocabulary. <laughs> hmm. This is a hard one. That's the point. This is a cool thing to give away. Yeah, but the, if this isn't even the best one? No. <laughs> you better come up with a better <laughs> question. I got good questions. Tell me something you know. Well, I don't know what they have in common. <laughs> <laughs> you can't even think about it? Like if you put together... The, okay, so if you're reading people's comments... I can't see them that much. These people are getting close. <laughs> Kyle says I have an extraordinary vocabulary. Most of the time, I just throw a word out there that I'm not sure on, and I just hope it sticks. <laughs> Sometimes he says words that don't make sense, and then we have to Google them. Okay, so we're going to do... We've been live for one hour, six minutes, and 40 seconds. When we get to one hour and eight minutes, I'm just going to tell the answer. Okay. Nick is close. Is are they right but they're just not saying it correctly? Like in the correct wording but like the meaning is correct? Um I think Nick I think Nick won. Okay. What? Well, okay. So tell us. Okay. So he says, even if you fail over and over again, look for how you can do it right instead of wrong. Um, what does that have to do with a light bulb? Really? I'm lost here. Do you not know how a light bulb was made? Yeah, but I mean, like, what is that? WD forty. WD. So WD forty stands for water displacement number forty. So they they went through forty. 40 different formulas before they found the right one, mm -hmm. or 39. So basically they failed 39 times before they succeeded, mm -hmm. before they succeeded one time. Mm -hmm. And then everybody knows the, uh, you know, the old saying about how Thomas Edison, you know, made the light bulb where he tried 10,000 times. Mm -hmm. It really wasn't 10,000 times, but however many times it was, uh, failed over and over and over and over again before he ever succeeded. And both of those things are really valuable, you know, light bulb. I mean, we got four of them right here in front of us. Uh, and WD-40, you know, everybody has a can of that. They're very, very um, uh, important things in life in general. 
the theme of how that relates to shooting is that you're gonna get deep yeah I mean it's just basically that you know as um, if you're trying to learn you're trying to you know go on a journey to get better at something you're gonna fail a lot of times and you gotta learn from every single one of those failures on how not to do it 100% yeah. yeah and every time you fail it's about learning what didn't work so that you can try again the next time with information that can make that next attempt better uh, and then bringing that into um, it, bringing that into uh, into shooting is basically, you know, that's a pretty obvious tie-in, and especially with the theme of beyond the podium. So, um, yeah, I think kind of I think Nick won that. Okay, so Nick wins Game Boy. Yep, old old school box of Game Boy. Cool. We want to do our last giveaway. Do you have a question? No, not yet. Are you Googling questions? Yeah. <laughs> I feel like it had to be a good one. <laughs> okay. Um, last giveaway. <laughs> Thank you, gift card, please. <laughs> Nick, let us know if you want to replace... Your your old school box of Game Boy with a uh, a DQ gift card. What's a good gift card? For the same price? value? <laughs> like twenty five dollar DQ gift card. <laughs> okay, pay attention. What? I'm just reading the comments. Yeah. What's your question? I don't have one. I don't know what the giveaway is, so I don't know what an appropriate question is. The, the giveaway for this one is the last Game Boy hat. And, um, and then a flat of the matching ammo. So it'll be one whole flat of Game Boy Dark Storms. 250 shells. And um, we'll mail them to you. And I'm just telling you right now, they're the coolest box. The whole, the flat itself is, is, uh, whoops. The box that it comes in, it's not like brown cardboard. It is like shiny black, uh, cardboard with black tape and it's black lettering. It is cool. And the shells are awesome. Actually, actually, I'm going to do one up better. I'm going to get, it'll be a flat of... No, people won't use that. We got a new ammo called uh, Dark Storm Seven and a Half X, which is cool, but not that many people would use those. Um, okay, so okay, so Nick wants the shells. Um, so we'll get we'll get a a, a box of the cool uh, game boards for you. Okay, so do you know a question? What are, what kind of questions are you googling? Just googling like, trivia questions, questions about space. Okay. My question is. Yeah, Doug says he's gonna give. Doug. I w I wanted to give away the seven and a half X, but I I think a whole flat of those might be might wait uh, might be too hard to use over the court. Um. Doug, in the comments, explain what the seven and a half X is. Uh, well, what about this one? That's that's hard. I I, I got a good one. Okay. Okay. The okay. Let's see. <laughs> Matthew says, if you do a Google question, everyone's going to race to Google to get the answer. Okay, my question is... I know this guy. I've shot with him. And it was very cool and honor. Who was 
There might be some people that get this. Who won juniors at the very first ever World FITASC Championship? And what year was it? Which one? And then tell me what I got a better question. I'm scrapping that question. <laughs> right now scrapping like that again. question. There are only let me see. Okay, the question is um, how many people have there ever been that have won both uh, that have won a World Feed Task Championship as a junior and in the open category? I can't see. No, I'm scrapping that question. Let's go back to the first question. No. <laughs> yeah, it's a better question. David, what? make up your mind. Okay, the, the most recent question. How many people have ever won both juniors and an open title at the World Feed Test Championship, and who are they? The answer to my first question was, uh, uh, I'm pr gonna pronounce his name incorrectly, but um, it was uh, Michel Manjot. He's a Frenchman, very nice guy. He won it in 1979 in the junior uh, category. Also, the cool thing about him is that in 1983, he won it outright. So that is one of the people for my second question. None of those right? David Z wants to know who you are. Who I am? Yeah. I, well, we're both brunette. Could be talking about you. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> I'm Kaylee Browning. Nice to meet you. None of those answers are right. Not yet. A Are you of, wanting a, them to say the names too? Yeah. The, the Numbers is, and names. How many people and who are they? A couple of people have got... The first person that I'm seeing here that got the number right is Caden Fitch. So, Caden said four. Yeah, Caden Fitch is correct. Okay, but so we, need we to know, know the it's names. four, but who are they? We know the number is oh, four, wait. but who are they? What? He's not correct. <laughs> Just kidding? Yep, yeah. The, actually, Chris Thompson was the first person that was correct. Five. So, the number is five, but we need to know the names. For, for one of these um, and uh, a flat of the game boards. Also, Doug Kirkendall in the comments uh, answered my question. So the 7.5X, it's a 2.5 millimeter shot. It's only legal for shooting feed task, but it hammers targets. It absolutely hammers targets. Haas was really, wait. Haas is very close. He's missing one person. There's five people, guys. Five people. <laughs> Everybody keeps forgetting one person. 
<laughs> and Nick keeps calling him Mango. <laughs> His name is Manjo. M A N J O T. <laughs> That's how I would spell it. <laughs> it literally spells Man Joe. Okay, Haas wins. It's um, it's Richard Falls, Ben Hussway, myself, Greg Wolf, and Michelle Manjo. Five people. Go. Those are the five people. So Haas is the winner. And so Haas, uh, let everybody that's won, email us. Oh, well, I know. It's Ron Schwartz, yeah. Nate. Uh, what was going to say if they want it shipped? Oh, yeah. You'll have to send us an email. Yeah. Sh uh, uh, sorry. Didn't mean to say that word. If you want it shipped, uh, send us an email with all of your contact information, and, yeah. and we'll ship it out to you. Yes. Uh, cool. That was fun. That was fun. We'll have, uh, not that these weren't good giveaways, but they're like kind of spur of the moment giveaways. So maybe we'll start doing some better giveaways randomly. That would be fun. Um, David says, I have no idea how I got up here. So what game is this? You're a little late to the game. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the world of shooting. <laughs> we shoot. We are both uh, competitive shotgun shooters. Um, I recently just made the Olympic team. He's a world champion in shotgun shooting. So we're glad to have you here. Very cool. Consider subscribing. <laughs> Um, okay, cool. So that was fun. Yeah, if you won, send us an email uh, for, so we can get your uh, shipping information. I'm sure, yeah, that'll be cool. That was fun, guys. Thanks for playing. And we'll try to get some. Um, we'll get some cooler gifts. And Not better that these questions. Cool, this was all spur of the moment. It was very spur of the moment. So next time we'll be more prepared with questions and more prepared with giveaways. Yeah. And. Uh, I mean, if y'all have something that y'all would like giveaway, they, we do have some upcoming giveaways that are related to the podcast with the episodes. Um, but if y'all have something that you know you think of that would be a good giveaway for our lives that we do here, let us know because we're here for the people. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Hmm. All right. Cool. Um, let's finish off by doing um, by doing. Five minutes of random fire questions from them. Okay, yeah, we always like to end our lives with like rapid fire questions. So give us your best questions. It does not have to be shooting related. It can literally be anything. Give us your best questions. Ready, go. They can be one word answers. They can be one sentence answers. True or false. True or false. A B C. A B C. Are you just copying what I'm saying? No. <laughs> Kyle, we were thinking about that. That's a good one. You shouldn't give that one away. What, a trap? Of course I can give away a pramatic. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's expensive. Is water wet? Yep. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Depends on if it's frozen or not. But it would still be wet. It melts. You're going to have to read them. Okay. When's the next broadcast? Every Tuesday at 5 o'clock Central Time. And then we release podcast episodes every Wednesday. Yes. Um, free lesson at one of your scheduled locations nearest the winter. Yeah, I mean, That'd we'll be definitely cool. be throwing in free. What we would really like to do is eventually throw in, you know, like a, a, a free weekend maybe here at yeah, the lodge. Yeah, like when the lodge is done. Yeah. Um, favorite sneaker. What's your favorite shoe? Mm. Man, that's hard to choose. I like my Maybe shoes. you shouldn't answer this question yet. Yeah, I like... I like. Maybe you shouldn't answer this yeah, question. Yeah, I heard you. Okay. I love shoes. Um, if you saw my closet, you would, it's embarrassing how many shoes I have, so I don't know that I could pick just one shoe. Uh, my favorite shoes are... Um, God, I like Brooks running shoes. They're really comfortable. Uh, but my favorite shoe, probably those... Um, New Adidas shoes with the 3D printed bottoms that are like made out of recycled material. It's pretty cool. On the shoe fact, listen to our episode tomorrow because you'll discover why you shouldn't wear shoes. <laughs> shoe prisons. <laughs> they are called shoe prisons, as our guest told us. Uh, breakfast or dinner? I'm a breakfast person. I oh love... my, are you crazy? What? 
You would rather have breakfast than dinner? If you're telling me I can't have Chick Fil A, wait, 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 Chick Fil A, chicken biscuit. For breakfast. you, what is dinner? Uh, lunch. That's why. <laughs> you don't make any sense. <laughs> Okay, we have to clarify this because no. this is an ongoing thing. No. Do y'all think dinner means lunch, lunch and dinner, and then no. traditionally, like, or is, you know, like, later in that, like, after 5 p.m. considered supper? Because here, you say, let's go get dinner, you're talking about lunch. You say, let's go eat supper, you're talking about after 5, Kaylee. you're talking about supper. Let like, me just, ribs, potatoes, let me, meat. let me rephrase like to you what you just said. So you're saying that dinner is lunch. Mm -hmm. Lunch and dinner are the same thing. Yes. Okay. That's like saying that red and blue are the same thing. How is that like saying that? How can you say two different words are the same thing? Dinner, is, I'm not. Well, okay. You are. No. Dinner is in the middle of the day. Just second no. middle of the day. Absolutely not. Anyway, if you're talking about a 24-hour clock, We're getting maybe. off track here. <laughs> Okay, see, look, everybody is on my side with this. Dinner, 5 p.m. Dinner Supper is, is the last meal. Thank you. Kyle, you're crazy. You're right, Kyle. Uh, okay, so I'm definitely an, a dinner person. If you're in the South, dinner is always before supper. Kevin, can I get a lobster roll <laughs> and a bottle of water? <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, what was that? Oh. Supper is the last note. Yep, agreed. <laughs> Holy cow, these went by fast. Wait, yeah, go back Does up. the straw on the rib work for comb height? The straw on the wit rib. I don't know what don't that know means, what that Jack. Means. Uh, when are you getting married? <laughs> uh, Pop <laughs> Popeye's chicken sandwich or Chick Fil A? Chick Fil A. I'm a Chick. -fil -A. I'm a Chick Fil A girl. Chick Fil A. I'm not answering the one that Nate asked because I don't want to give Kaylee any any insight into that. And, uh, David says, and do you accept donations? Uh, I don't know what you're talking about, but you can... Another one of the things that we need to do, a thousand followers, um, if we, like we can embed our live stream videos on a website so it's super interactive. Uh, and, and so um, we can do that a lot easier. But yeah, I mean, you can... We, on the bottom, um, if you later on visit beyondthepodiumpodcast.live, you can do donations and stuff there. And every time you do that, I mean, if you were to go there right now and do a tip or a donation, it would pop up on the screen whatever message you would want yeah. uh, for somebody to see. Um, let's see. <laughs> Nick says, is David going to take your last name? I keep telling <laughs> Kaylee that she can't change her last name because it's too cool. Uh, are you shooting the regional at Hopkins? Uh, maybe. Are you? I don't know. I didn't know about it, so possibly. Where is the lodge nearest major city? Little Rock, I guess, would be the biggest city. Uh, the closest town would be Conway. What was the five-person question? Missed it. Curtis wants to know. Long story short, the question was, who were the... Only people to have ever won a World Feed Test Championship title as a junior and in the open category. Uh, and the answer was um, Richard Falls, Ben Huswaite, Michelle Manjo, Greg Wolf, um, my, myself. Was that five? I, I, I think it was I was trying five. to read the comments. I wasn't paying attention. You have to read them out loud. Uh, Caden says, best advice you could give young shooters? Um, best advice to give young shooters is understand that failure is inevitable. You're always going to fail way more than you succeed. And like we said earlier in the podcast, try to be as self-aware as you can because it's the best learning tool. I got two answers to that question. Number one um, is her answer. And number two is in relation not to shooting but to creating a career in the game do not ask for sponsorships um instead show them why you're invaluable to them and if you become as a, i see this so many times and i, I just want to tell kids not to do it because if you're a kid that as a, a younger kid you have a bunch of names on the back of your vest 
and you just kind of will switch companies for a free hat or for something like that. Um, if you make it as an extremely valuable or extremely extremely good professional shooter, now all of a sudden, because of your history, you have no value because people will know that you will switch brands or change your message for cheap. So the best thing you can do, thinking long-term as a young kid, if you want to make it in this sport, is, is um, figure out what companies you like, stay loyal to them, and show them that you appreciate them as a company, you value their, you value their product, and be it free or not, you will use it. Yeah. Um, because if you make it as a, as a pro later on, you do, cannot understand how valuable you would be to... Uh, in, yeah, in, brand loyalty is everything. So don't go after huge. sponsorships just to have sponsorships. Make it something that is a, a lasting relationship. I, the, to give you an example, with my resume, um, I mean... Th- it's hard to say that there's any other American shooter that has a, a bigger uh, resume than me. I have these is this is a list of my sponsors: Gamebore, Parazzi, Primatic. You could say Pila, but I don't get paid by them. Um, and I mean, I, <laughs> that's, I don't have very many. Okay, so I'm probably forgetting one on the spot. So I apologize to whoever that was, um, but. You see people that have never won anything with 30. And so um, they're not that important. Just be brand loyal. That's it. I cannot uh, suggest that enough. Um, let's see. Everyone's saying dinner's in the evening. Elizabeth says, we would like y'all to come to Virginia again to give lessons. I had so much fun teaching there. And Elizabeth, you have a beautiful place. And um, I would like to come back. Uh, that's um, especially once the season mm-hmm. calendar gets fixed. It's been so crazy. Uh, if you're in the South, dinner is always before sunset, says David. Um, <laughs> let's see. Under Armour shoes are the best, says Nick Bourbon. Ron Schwartz says, I hope Carabas is open. Uh, everyone's saying that dinner is at night. Well, they're all wrong. You're all wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Kurt says, that's like first breakfast and the second breakfast in the Shire. I know you're not going to get that. Do you get that? No. <laughs> I don't think so. But I got you, Curtis. That's pretty funny. Um, Kevin wants to know, when are you coming back to West Side Sporting Grounds? As soon as possible. I love that place. Uh, and my calendar will be up pretty soon. So, um I'll send an email to all my students. Justin. Let's see. I think that's about it. Yeah, it looks like. Cool. David says, third answer, life ain't a movie. You're going to miss. You might be as well standing there with with the stapler in your hand. I don't remember that. Um... That sounds good. Yep. Cool. Cool. All right, guys. Well, we will be more prepared. Uh, You see the next live that we do, we'll do a better giveaway. We'll see. We'll try to talk to some other people, see if we can get some other cool stuff. Um, Maybe we'll do like one really good giveaway episode a month. Yeah. Yeah. Something like that. Um, And then then in between, maybe we'll give away little things. But it it was fun. Um, So... As we wrap up, before everybody goes, our episode that will be out tomorrow morning is with Dr. Matt Zanis. Mm -hmm. Dr. Matt Zanis, who is a movement expert. He is our sports physio for Team USA. So he travels with anybody that's made the team, like to World Cups or Pan Am Games or um, the Olympics. And he is like our team doctor, sports physio. He's a, he's a young guy, but very smart, uh, and the, we, I think it was a really cool episode. Like if you, what, what, Once you get into past the introduction and start listening to what he has to say, um, 
it's it's very eye opening, and I think that a lot of people will benefit from. The, I honestly, there's never been a podcast like what's coming out in shooting. For we, nobody has ever talked to somebody that understands that, and, I, and we're, so we're gonna have them on more, mm -hmm. uh, so we can get more in depth and everything. But I really want to recommend everybody listen to this because it's so cool, uh, and it, it you know it, it's basically taking an expert in what we kind of dabble in in our shooting and letting them teach you and educate you on the medical explanation, the biological and chemical explanation yeah. for how to handle pressure, um, how to move correctly, how to think, how, what your eyes are doing. Um, it, was, it was really and, cool. And on top of that, like specific workouts relating to shooting that you can do to improve your shooting. Yeah. Um, not saying that you do these and your scores are going to go up, but s moving these specific muscles and uh, workouts to improve that for sure. Yeah, I, I think it was it's very cool. So check it out. Um, share it on social media. Subscribe if you haven't. Uh, tell your friends to subscribe so we can start doing really cool episodes because I want to start doing that. And don't think that I've forgotten. Listen. If we get to 2,000 subscribers by next Tuesday, David will have to do something, okay? We'll create something, but he will have to do something that will be fantastic, I think. <laughs> It'll be fun. Cool. Cool, guys. All right, sounds good. Um, we will uh, we'll be with you, well, check us out in the morning on the new episode, and then we'll be with you again on Tuesday. So for the winners, don't forget to send us an email. Yep. Thank you, guys. See you, guys. Well, that was a little premature. I still got to end the episode. <laughs> All right. There we go. Adios. Hey.